Yeah, what's good, Joe? Shaman the Bigger P, and I'm um, here to talk about the fights from last night. Um, overall, the fights were great. It was supposed to be, I know there were supposed to be six fights that were supposed to be at least televised, but um, I, but then I guess sometime in the afternoon, uh, there was a problem with the HBO card in Argentina where they were having storms. So let me start with talking about at least that fight card first. Um, Pretty much, I was, you know, pretty much I was, I think I was on the road because I was coming back from Boston. And I, you know, as I was coming back from Boston, I was just checking my, I was checking my phone, just checking some boxing news. And something jumped out to me and it said that they were pushing up the main event to, uh, for Martinez and Murray to 8.30. And I'm like, what? Like, cause, I mean, that's unprecedented. I mean, I'd never heard of a broadcast, you know, um, being main event being pushed up like that. So I think the fight that was bumped off the televised part was um, Abregu and Dakari. And I wanted to see that fight. I was really interested in seeing that fight. But by the time I got back to my place, I, I mean, it wasn't televised either. I had to go open up the, I had to open up my, um, my netbook and get, you know, get a stream to actually watch that fight. And I only watched maybe the last two, three rounds. I think it ended after round 11 or something like that. Even go, it didn't go a distance because they were like, you know, the rain's coming. We want to get this fight going. Screw it. Let's cut it down. But for the couple of fights, I did see it. I saw the, I think I saw the knockdown. But, I mean, as much as I really want to talk about that fight, I mean, I have to wait until I actually see the whole fight to really talk about it. But I found it kind of odd. But, you know, Abregu, he won the decision and... Looks like he may actually pan out. I mean, cause, I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I know he was a heavy. I know he's a heavy puncher and nothing really, nothing else, you know. But he, he really. I mean, for the couple, few rounds that I showed that I saw from him, you know, he looked good. So, um, but yeah, I won't go too much into that fight. Cause like I said, I didn't watch it from beginning, you know, to beginning to end, like I did with the other fights. Um, the other early fight that I saw and it was available on YouTube because I think it's the only fight that I actually saw in the afternoon. Um, was the Wilder Harrison fight, and uh, that pretty much, I mean, it was gonna go two ways. Either Harrison would outbox him, or Wilder would land one punch and Harrison would just crumble. Harrison crumbled. Um, Wilder didn't really show anything in that fight other than the right hand and just pounding. I mean, it was a sloppy, very he was a very sloppy finisher. Um, and Harrison, as he did against any big punchers, just crumbled. Um, I mean, I mean, we give, I mean, Harrison has gotten so many chances, has gotten so many, um, chances to actually become a player in the division, but, you know, he's 40, 41 or whatever. I mean, he's not going to go anywhere. I mean, he should, I mean, he should really just retire. I mean, he, I know he won that prize fighter tournament and he goes and gets, you know, he gets KO'd again. And Wilder is ripe for an upset. <laughs> There's no question about that. I mean, he's upping his he's only upping his competition now. And like I said, he's only shown that he has a monster right hand, which I feasibly could think that he can knock out any active heavyweight with that right hand. But just really nothing else to go behind it. But um I mean he'll get I mean, they all do. I mean I mean either because Wilder doesn't seem like I mean he's been a pro for what? four or five years and really didn't really improve. You know, I haven't seen any real improvement from him boxing ability wise. So yeah, he's I mean he's pretty much right for an upset. No question about that. Um and then now we'll get to the HBO car, um the main event, which is you know, that's the air first with Sergio Martinez versus Martin Murray. Um my thoughts about this fight was it was close. It was very, very close. Um, I was not happy with the way Martinez looked. Um, it could be age. It could be injuries. It could be both. Or it could be maybe he didn't prep correctly or didn't let his injuries heal up correctly. But he, he looked absolutely terrible. He looked terrible. I mean, and he's 38 and he's still fighting with his hands down. Like there's only so much, there's only so long you can get away with that before it catches up to you. And as far as I know, I mean, Martinez has never been the type. I mean, has always has always relied on his athleticism, like Roy Jones, to get away with certain doing certain things. 
But it's it's coming it's becoming very clear that his athleticism is starting to go, in you know in the, in the boxing sense you know, yeah. So pretty much the stuff of keeping your hands down, you can't do that. And you will start getting caught, and he eventually did get caught. Uh, Murray scored a little knockdown on him, but all through the fight it was just for first Murray gave away a lot of the early rounds simply just by not opening up. He was just letting Martinez do his little you know shimmy and. Drop stand down, throw a combo, throw a little flashy combo. And the fight heated up, you know, in the mid rounds. Um, the fight heated up in the mid rounds, and Martinez just looked, and he, he, he started tiring. He, he just started looking, he, he looked bad. And there was a second knockdown that they called um, where Murray landed a, landed a glancing, uh, glancing shot to the head. And I didn't see the the feet tangle, and Martinez did go down. It was something similar to how he went down in the in his first fight with Paul Williams. It was just a glancing shot, and his off balance. There was no feet, and they called it a slip. I was like, that's not a slip. You know, I, I thought that was a really bad call. And then there was another one where Sergio takes a body shot, and it was legit. And I thought it was also a legit body shot too, and they called it a low blow. And uh, and I'm thinking to myself, they okay. So, you know, pretty much, I wouldn't say a fix was in, but it looked like the referee was giving him the benefit of the doubt. And it continued, like, Murray, well, Murray put in work in the second half of the fight. However, the one thing he did that I, I think, the, the one thing that he did that probably cost him the fight, per se, was in the last one. Because going into the last round, I had the fight even. It was very even. And Murray took his foot off the gas. Um, he, he, I mean, you have to mean, if you're going to take the title away from the champions back, especially in, you know, in a place like Argentina, you know, where you are just going crazy over Sergio Martinez, you got to go and you got to force the fight to him. You got to take that title. And that is what he didn't do. And that is why, that's what to me, he, that's where he lost. He, he lost about to me by one point. Any other score other than that, or a maybe even a draw, were, were probably the only acceptable things a one point victory for Sergio. But it was a very minute victory, and add to the fact it showed the punch stats after the fight, and Murray outlanded Sergio in everything. You know, pretty much Murray was gonna have to knock him out or knock him, you know, knock him around a couple times to get the decision, and especially in the homecoming that was gonna happen. That was gonna happen though, and you know. And, and I felt for Murray because he he put on a great performance. I mean, I mean, first half you know he was shaking probably nerves or whatever, but he really recovered and he really put on great performance. And I mean, I look forward to him you know doing you know doing good things in the middleweight division. And as for Sergio, age I mean age and age and injuries are catching up to him. He's thirty eight years old, and for, I guess after the fight they said he broke his left hand again. Which means he's probably gonna be out again for the year, or if he's not out again for the year, he'll probably fight somewhere near the end of the year. But Sergio, you know, Sergio, Sergio is you know is one of my favorite fighters to watch. I mean, he's I mean he came up the hard way and you know he's a good fighter. But Sergio's run is probably coming to an end. It's after that fight. I have no doubt that if he faced someone like Golovkin or maybe maybe Chavez Jr. again, he probably would lose. And you know, especially with the hands down. If can you imagine Sergio fighting hands down against Golovkin, and Golovkin absolutely blitter, you know, I could see him obliterating him one left hook. I mean, that's how vulnerable I thought Sergio was that um, last night. Well, you know, we'll see what happens with Sergio. See what happens when he gets his, you know, when he gets his hand. When his broken left hand heals up again, and um, see where he goes. I mean, but now I mean, it's for him, you know, he should really go. I mean, I'm pretty sure now he's got to go after a money fight now because yeah, I'm pretty sure he knows that you know his time is up. You know, it's getting it's getting the point where he's getting injured and age is catching up to him. You know, he's got to start cashing out. You know, personally, like I said fight Golovkin. You know, that's the fight I want to see him fight next. Um, and then the other fight on the HBO card. Now this was the fight. I mean, uh, um, it was Chris Ariel versus Berlin St um, Stimmer, and um, I wasn't really ex expecting much other than a slugfest. Um, 
Stewart, I've never been really high on, except I acknowledge that he has heavy hands, very heavy hands. And Ariola is just Ariola, you know, he's not much of a boxer. He just comes and he brawls with someone, and that's what that's what he does. And he comes in the ring out of shape. And those two went at it for twelve rounds. Um, I was, I was, I was actually really impressed by that fight. Not one of the fights, but they did. It, it was just a, it was just an old school hard hit heavyweight fight, and that's something that is lacking in today's heavyweight division, um, especially among the top contenders of the division. Now you're saying both those men, you know, then you know are not typically your top contenders per se. I mean, they're not highly, you know, they're not highly, you know, reputable fighters or anything like that. Um, but they, I mean, they are ranked. They are highly ranked. I mean, it's not like Mike Marlow and the other, and the Polish guy earlier this year. They were, it was class. It was a top class fight. Uh, it was brutal. Like, Ariel took some punishment. Like, took punishment. I had never said him take even more than the one that Vitaly dished out to him years ago. Uh, Stephen managed to knock him down in the third round with a beautiful right hand. And he got back up and they were just brawling all the place. Stephen, you know, at at no part of the t at no part of the fight didn't seem like he was troubled by him. I mean, he maybe maybe he was staggered a little bit, but that's about it. And he just absolutely pounded Ariola. Um, yeah, he pounded him bloody, broke his nose. You know, I I honestly thought a stoppage would happen, but surprisingly, it did. It actually went the distance, and Severin got the victory, clear cut victory, and. Watching that fight, all it did was just make me, make me really, make me um, really wonder what happens in the heavyweight division and why we can't have more fights like this in the heavyweight division. Um, so I mean, so that's basically my thoughts about that fight. I mean, Stevens gonna like, probably get the shot at Vitaly and Ariola. I wouldn't say his career is over, but he should really. Really, 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 like, settle down and try to, like, first of all, gain, you know, lose weight, you know, 248. No, he should be coming in the ring at like 225, 230, somewhere between there, and tighten up his skills just a little bit because he's still young. Still somewhat young. And in, in this current heavyweight division, he could still make some noise, but yeah, he has to, get, those two things have to be corrected. Um, so that now brings us to the Showtime card. The first card was um, Peter Quillen versus Fernando Guerrero. Um, it was a very, it was a spirited fight. It was a very fun, it was a fun little brawl. Um, Guerrero, it, almost immediately, like the size difference was very noticeable. Uh, Quillen, they clubbed him to the canvas four or five times before they stopped it. And I thought Guerrero would have been gone in, I think it was the second round. And because I, I mean, girl, I thought was Chinny. I always, I thought he was Chinny ever since that fight with Grady Brewer. And um, to to his credit, he he got he you know he he stormed back. You know he was catching Quillen with some you know some good left hands. You know he he was fighting. He fought he fought his heart out. But my thing is, yeah, the weight was just too much. Um, and Quillen finally stopped him in I think it was what seventh round after the after the first time. Now Guerrero looked like he probably could have gotten up again. It wasn't like he was done for the night. He was just he just got knocked down, but the ref probably said, you know what? No, that that's not we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna stop it. And so it was yeah, he, you know, he gave Grill eventually gave a good account of himself. It wasn't a complete blowout. And Quillen, you know, once again entertained. Um and you know, got past his first defense. However, though, he nearly lost that belt on the scales, though. Um, I wasn't really happy to read that him and Guerrero both weighed in um, over the 160 limit, although Guerrero's was just a slight, you know, his Quillen was one and a half over. Um, so, I mean, that fight would have been a little bit diminished if, he had that Quillen actually did lose his title on the scale, so I just hope he tines up on his uh, his training and be a little bit more disciplined about his weight. And um, then afterwards, there was the main event on at Barclay. It was Danny Garcia versus Zab Judah. Um, overall, it I mean it was a good fight. 
Um, at first, I, mean, I thought it was going to be incredibly one-sided as Zab didn't really do much in the early rounds and got while well, Garcia was pressing the action. And then afterwards, Garcia started catching him, started beating him up a little bit because Zab got a little tired. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, here we go again. This is what Zab does. Zab starts to fade. And I think in round eight, he, you know, Garcia knocked him down. So I'm thinking, okay, um, stop it just near. And prior to that, you know, there were a couple of times where Zab hit the chicken dance, you know, started doing the hucklebuck, you know, off some punches. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, he's, he's, he's about to be finished. And then something happens that doesn't really happen in a Zab Judah fight. He came back. He actually, he came roaring back. Um, and I think he won the last three rounds to me. He, you know, basically he showed, you know, he showed something he had never, I had never seen him do before. And, you know, catching him with left hands, using speed, because I think he just warmed up in the fight. You know, there was no wobbling off hits. And he took it to Garcia, and he rocked Garcia a couple, you know, a good number of times. Um, Garcia, you know, didn't, you know, step as he didn't go down. And my thing is, I mean, Garcia put in, like I said, Zab dropped too many rounds for me to think. I mean, I, there wasn't going to be no robbery um, for this fight. I mean, Garcia clearly won enough rounds, plus the knockout to win the fight. But my thing is, like, why couldn't Zab fight like that for 12 rounds instead of three? I mean, and what was weird is he didn't do it, at least do it, he, didn't, he didn't do it in the early rounds. He did it in the later rounds, which is what usually faders typically fade. Um, but, yes, yeah, Zab had a good showing. And because I knew, cause I, think, I think he knew that like, if he lost badly, I mean, there probably wouldn't be another title shot for him. Because um, he's 35, he's, a, he's getting older. But with that showing, at least he probably secured himself probably some payday at some point. So he may, you know, we may see him get another shot at the title. As for Garcia, I mean, like I said, he did his best. I mean, he, I mean, he did, he showed, I mean, he put his, he put his punches together pretty well. Uh, I, that, and I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I did, I did note that he did improve, you know, you know from his previous fight, you know, he put his punches together well. He showed a good chin, and he showed heart because that headbutt, that you know, that headbutt that caused that mean cut on his forehead, because he was poor, he was leaking, and he still continued to fight. So, you know, we'll see where he goes. I think they say he's getting the. I thought who do you, I don't know if he's getting the winner of Peterson Matisse, or is he getting the con fight again? Uh, speaking of that, we'll get to the. That's the last. Um, I think that was the last fight I saw because I didn't uh, the Khan versus Julio Diaz fight because that fight actually showed in the afternoon during one during one of the British streams, but I was out so I couldn't catch the fight. But I did read about it. I was reading about it, and they were like um, American edges Julio Diaz. I'm like, what? Really? So I I couldn't agree. So I watched the fight and there there's so there's so many things wrong. With Khan, I don't even know where to start. But first of all, Khan should not be having close shaves with Julio Diaz. Julio Diaz is, you know, at one point, you know, he was a he was a good fighter. Um, but he had pretty much been a you know a journeyman for the last couple of years. I mean, his record is still good, but Julio Diaz was supposed to be a warm up, you know, for something else. He was supposed to look good against him. And then go on to bigger fights again. And what I saw was same thing: defense liabilities, head up in the air, um, fighting too wild. You know, I, can't, I I I I literally did like this when I saw Diaz drop Khan in that fourth round. And then later on, Diaz was again like rocking him, like hitting him flush over and over. And he hit him, and then he let him off the hook. And Khan was just literally, like, like there were times where Khan was literally gone from the fight, and Diaz never pressed it. Um, and, I mean, but Khan did put enough wins, uh, enough rounds in the bag, and plus, you know, they were fighting in his hometown. So, I mean, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't say, I mean, I couldn't say he didn't get robbed because Diaz would rock him and didn't, just didn't do anything to follow up. 
you know, but Khan should not be barely edging uh, a win against Julio Diaz at any at this point at their at their careers. Uh, it, it really should happen, and I give props to Diaz because, like I said, I, I expected him to. Well, granted, both of them have chance. Both of them are successful to left hooks. So I expected, but I expected Diaz to slower fire to actually get caught, or at least get stopped. And it was Khan that nearly got stopped, and eventually, and it also got dropped. Um, I'll say this for Khan: um, for all his flaws, and there are plenty of them, uh, he um he still he, he'll always be a walkout and he'll always be an exciting fight because you just you watch him you never know you know if he'll either win spectacularly or lose spectacularly or just be in trouble um it, it pretty much the fight reminded me of his fight with Maidana and in, in some sort of ways except I don't you know, except he didn't you know except little, you know he was a little bit performance wise he was worse against Diaz than he was against Maidana um but yeah, I mean, Julio Diaz. I mean, he got himself, like I said, he got himself a payday, and who knows? You know, maybe someone saw that fight, so he may. I mean, we'll probably see him on TV again in the future because there, because he had nothing to be ashamed of. He, you know, he put on, he put on a showing that I didn't expect from him, and you know, he, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, so yeah, those are my um, my thoughts on the fights from yesterday, and uh, right now I'm probably gonna go download a couple of them. Because some of them I did like, you know, the Quill and Guerrero fight, and especially the Ariel Stavern fight. I really like those fights a lot um, to go put in my collection. So, uh, till next time, till next week, um, you know, Floyd versus Guerrero. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely have thoughts for about that. All right, you guys. Peace.